Morning, my name's Michael Foster. Today I'm in southeast Queensland, driving up the hill to Springbrook, uh, to the World Heritage Rainforest area. Today I'm going to visit Dr. Isla Keto. She's the president of the Australian Rainforest Conservation Society, and she's doing some great work up here um, in the rainforest, and she's using some of our equipment as well. So it's gonna be a nice day, it's nice and sunny for now, so I'm really looking forward to this. Good afternoon, Isla. Um, good to see you again. It's good to see you too, Michael. Uh, so just tell us what the Springbrook uh, Recovery Project is. Oh, it's all about bringing back a World Heritage Area. This whole plateau in this area uh, was cleared since 1906. And it is very important because it really is the heartland of the entire subtropical Gondwan and World Heritage Area because it most potentially most closely resembles the ancient paleoclimatic conditions under which many of the ancient species evolved. So we think it's really okay. important to, to bring it back. Okay. And is it true you have about 170 weather stations here? Yes, we, we have a, a fantastic opportunity to have science informing the restoration. It's uh, by the Feel sensor good. networks we think is a transformative technology because it, because it gives you real-time data on the environmental conditions that shape what grows where and how communities start assembling. Okay. And so just behind you there, that's a uh, paddock you're trying to regenerate? Yeah. Most people would never, ever think of buying a cow paddock as a, for a national park. No, not at all. No, no. So, But we think you have to think in ecological time. In Australia, we've we've gone past the balance, and national parks are generally too small to be viable in the long term. They've got to be chunked up and and reconnected. You know, the environment has been terribly fragmented. So, um, this is one of the opportunities. We are confident that the forests will recover. In fact, if you look at the ridge line behind me, that was cleared in the last hundred years. Okay. Uh, you know, going back about 30, 40 years ago, most of that was still cleared. So it is coming back, it can come back. So you have to think in those long term time frames and think of this national park as it's going to be in a hundred years time. Okay, that's fantastic. Well, let's go have a look at the pristine rainforest. I'm really keen to see that. Okay. All right. Great. Okay, so we're in some pretty nice rainforest here, Isla. Uh, so how much of the plateau is now looking like this? Well, there's, there's over 60% that is now revegetated, but not of all of it. This is actually, part of this is what survived all the clearing. So it's a good idea of what the forest will be like in the future. Okay. After we've, we've set the train running in, in this direction. Okay. Um, so how much of the area have you regenerated, do you think? Well, look, um, there's quite a bit of the area that we're responsible for that has naturally regenerated. And that's the trick, is to, is to identify which areas nature can do uh, everything on its own and where we need to work. And so of the area that we are working on, probably... It's, it's only, you know, something like 20-25% um, that okay. actually needs help. Okay. And you mentioned earlier that you wanted to measure sap flow in these trees. Uh, what, what sort of things are you hoping to find if you measure sap flow? Well, one of the things that we're really interested in is, is why have places like this held on to so many of the ancient creatures that date back many tens of millions of years, 50, sometimes 70 million years? And it's because there's been something stabilising these areas against the climate changes that have, have inevitably occurred over that long period of time. And 
uh, one theory is that hydraulic redistribution can be very important. Some of the bigger trees actually regulate the water that's available. Um, now that we've got very seasonal climates, they even out the moisture in the soils and in the microclimates for all the other species around them, and that would be really good to measure. Okay, that's fantastic. Well, Isla, it's uh, great visiting you again, and I love coming up here to Springbrook, and uh, thanks very much for having me. It's so good to see you, and uh, ICT has been fantastic help to us. That's fantastic, Isla. Thanks a lot. Thank you.